Hello out there, and today I'm going to be wrapping up 2020 with one final video, and we are going to be recognizing the company that I think has just been head and shoulders above all the other production companies this year. They've been uh, the company that has really impressed me more than anyone else, has gotten me a lot more excited for what they're doing in the future than I was, let's say, a year ago. Um, they've really, really just been fantastic with what they've done, and that is Kershaw, as you can see from the knives on the table. So believe it or not, yes, Kershaw is my favorite production company of 2020. Today we're going to talk about why. We're going to talk about the things that I saw from them that got me very excited. That might be a few specific models. That might be just a number of trends and, um, and business decisions. So we'll talk about all that. Obviously, if you are watching this, you should have an understanding that I have not experienced every single model from every single company that's come out this year. So my um, point of view is subjective to my experience. So there are some companies that I just don't buy knives from. Obviously, <laughs> they're not going to be the one that I picked for this. But um, but if you follow this channel, then you know that it's like the Benchmades, the CRKTs, the Spydercos, the Kershaws, a, a few other brands that I sort of keep track of, but um, of those major ones that you see on this channel a lot, the number one company of the year is Kershaw. And so let's, without any further ado, get into why. And I will start with one word, one word that I look for in every company every year, and Kershaw really nailed it on the head, balance. Balance, so much balance with the types of releases that they have, a great amount of variety, so many like different directions that they went and so many different options that they gave to sort of bring in every type of knife person that there was. Some things that called to like the nostalgic collector uh, from years years back, you know, the, the Kershaw of yesteryear. Um, some things that were new and innovative and exciting as well. So, you know, when I'm talking about the balance and the variety, um, what I hate to see, and, and I, I don't mean to pick on like the Civivis of the world, but, you know, Civivi might make a better knife than Kershaw, but you put four Civivis on the table, they're not going to have the level of variety that these four knives, let's say, do, and any four Kershaws from 2020 do, you know, and, and that's what I really like about what Kershaw does regularly is variety and the way the knives look, sure, but this year they really took that to the next level, and um, let's start just by talking about, we'll move the, the Launch 11 off to the side, let's start by talking about some of just like the, the major releases that they had, so they did have some major releases that they pushed to the front, you know, the forefront of what they're, um, they were doing with the, the highball, the NORAD, and then the tumbler. So two of those knives are here. I do not have the tumbler, but those were some really nice designs that came out in D2. So they sort of started right out with a, um, a better steel than the 8CR, which a lot of their knives had been, um, had been running on. They also this year had a lot of knives that were running on um, on bearings and not so much of the speed safe assist. So um, really good choices in terms of variety and balance there. And these knives are just good designs. You know, the tumbler for me wasn't one I was interested in, but the highball here I really really like. The NORAD here again I really really like. Just uh, two very good knives, smart decisions, um, releasing them the way they did with the materials they did, giving people a little bit of a nicer, at least material option, and a little bit better quality maybe than what you always get for the Chinese produced knives. So I liked that. But when we're talking about balance, there has to be stuff on the other side. And so the airlock here was just, for me, a, a huge home run. Because this was part of the starter series, uh, so it is this speed safe assisted knife, but this knife is, in terms of performance and action, it is as good as just about any speed safe that I've had. I mean, the action on it is really, really good if you're a speed safe person, like it's, it's pretty darn nice. Um, and the cutting performance is incredible. And you can call bullshit on what I'm about to say, and, and that's fine. Uh, you can go back and watch my video on the airlock, but I will tell you 100% that this knife outperforms the, the Launch 11, just in the duration of how long it will cut. 
And the reason for that is not because of materials, it's because of grind and thinness. And so what Kershaw did, even though they have this 4CR14 um, blade steel, which nobody's going to really jump up and down over, myself included, you know, it's not something that excites me. But the fact that it was so stupid thin that even after the blade was dull, the darn thing just kept cutting. Um, that's something that the Launch 11 certainly won't do, being just a little bit thick. So, you know, they, they did make some decisions here with the way they put these knives out that made them, um, the airlock especially is what I mean, uh, that, that made it. Uh, perform well despite the fact that it's not using the most you know high-end or coveted materials and for twenty dollars getting a knife this good is super super nice um, it's awesome you know and, and it's one that I can't recommend enough so again balance with all the things that they were doing you know getting a good quality knife for twenty dollars but for the people who wanted something you know different opening method different steel, still getting something for the $50 range that could compete with maybe some of the other D2 knives that are out there from all of the other companies. So I really, really liked that. Stuff that I don't have here that I can't show you, but also is um, is is indicative of, of what they were doing in terms of the variety is they came back to slip joints, which was really cool. Um, they came back to um, a, uh, a number of different slip joints. I was lucky enough to get my hands on one of them from, um, from Big Red EDC. He sent me a couple to check out. I sent him a couple to check out. The one I saw from him was the Culpepper. It was 8CR. It wasn't anything special in terms of materials, but you know, if you're someone who's trying to just get a nice, uh, a nice looking slip joint knife, since there is this slip joint craze going on and you know you want to get something in your pocket that is going to do the job the way that you know a knife needs to do the job those were just fine and again it was just another option it was another way for Kershaw to get their name out there and um and to provide a good variety of uh, of options for people to purchase and I thought that that knife, even though, like I said, it was a little bit larger than um, than the slip joints that I carry, but I thought that it was just fine. And um, yeah, I thought it was a smart thing for them to do. And so again, it's just, uh, just sort of branching out like that. The Lucha is the last one that I'll talk about here is the um, the Balasong that they have. So Kershaw coming out with a Balasong. I mean, just like going all over the place, doing everything. And again, there are people who are like big fans of the Lucha. So it's awesome. It's awesome that they're just hitting different types of people in the market and bringing people into the brand who um, who wouldn't have been there before. Right. So variety is really cool. Another thing, another big thing when we're talking about balance. So variety is just part of it. The next big thing and when we're talking about balance is extension. So what so many companies do is I'll do one or the other. You know, Kershaw's had years where they put out like 25 new models that all look sort of different. Right. But then when they're doing that, you're not able to do some of the other things as well. And so what they've done this year, in addition to all the new variety, is they've extended some lines. They extended the launch line, which they do almost every year, but they extended it in a different way to give a, a really nice EDC here, like the launch 11. I believe the launch 9 and the 13 came out as well. And those were just um, pretty good looking models as well and a good variety of size and extending this line. They also extended the copper nature matrixes to larger versions and um yeah i think they made like a, a medium-sized version and a large version meaning the original copper was small so there's just other things that they're doing to to push the other lines along and one of the things that just kills me so often about companies like kershaw and crkt is that they'll hit on a winner and just for something else to look at you know, I'll bring this back out. They'll hit on a winner and then a couple years later it gets discontinued and forgotten about. But there was money that they left on the table. There were there were other things that they could have done with this design, let's say. They could have explored it further. And Kershaw, you know, with that Natrix line, they just continue to push it, which is good. Um, and they're continuing to branch out with a number of other like extensions with, I think the Tumblr getting a uh, a number of limited editions and some of their other stuff getting um, getting exclusives as well. So just again going further and further with stuff. And then the last thing, sort of, I already segued into it, is limited editions, and it's super cool. I've wanted them to do something like this for a while, a sprint run series, and they started it in 2020. So Kershaw started, I think they're calling it the Factory Select or Factory Exclusive 
where they bring back a, uh, a model. Maybe it's not even a discontinued model, but they come out with a limited run of a knife and they have it available only on their webpage, Kershaw.com, whatever it is, right? And the first one they did, and this isn't the exact version, this is the original version, but they brought back the random leak, which was super cool. A lot of people didn't even know that the random leak had ever existed. So the random leak, if you didn't know, is a Kershaw leak like frame with sort of the random task blade that Ken Anin came up with. So it's like a reverse tanto kind of thing. So this is one of the uh, original random leaks. So it's just a leak with a different blade shape, but they brought that back for the first, uh, you know, special edition that they had there. And, and it was so cool because people were learning about it and seeing it and like, what's this? So it's different. It's a Kershaw leak, which is such a popular knife, but oh, now it's a different one. And like, what's special about it? And for me, someone who's so into discontinued knives and, and the history of these companies and like, like trying to, to find some of these old models and keep them alive, you know, seeing Kershaw value that just just meant a whole lot to me. I thought it was super cool. And yeah, the, the next few um, special editions have been knockouts and um, bare knuckles and blurs. So those are all things that are all sort of familiar to us already, but still it's a, it's a neat thing to do. And, and I just think it's cool. And I haven't bought a single one of them yet, but every time they announce one, I'm excited about what it is. I go on the website to find out. And then I'm always talking with people about, Oh man, you picked it up. What do you think? Is it cool? You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's creating this hype for me. And, um, yeah, it's just keeping interest in Kershaw for me, which is just, yeah, it's just great. It's just really great. And I'm, I'm so happy with what they're doing. Um, and the other thing about that, and maybe it's just because it's not that popular a thing and there's not that many fans who are rabid for it yet, let's say, but you're able to go onto the website and buy these things almost at a leisurely pace because they're making enough of them where they're not selling out in two minutes. It's not becoming this like crazy thing that's going to be, you know, on the secondary market and costing an arm and a leg. You know, it, it's just something that they're doing that they, they really don't need to do. But I, I feel like it's fan service and it's it's sort of answering the, the call that people have of I want this in a nicer material. I want this in a, you know what I mean? Give me something and they're doing it. And yeah, it doesn't seem like it's this money grab, cash needed kind of thing. I feel like it's something that's done with the fans in mind, which is pretty darn cool. So that's really it, guys. It comes down to balance. If you just think about the things that I've brought up in this video, a lot of companies do a lot of these things every year, but very rarely, at least in my experience, when I think back, on any given year, does any company really hit the nail on the head in so many areas the way that Kershaw has this year? Um, I'm really pumped about what they did. Uh, I'm surprised that none of these knives placed higher on my top 10 list of the year because, I, I mean, they they were on there and they were represented in some regard, but they, they didn't really make the very tip top, but man, as a company, I, I couldn't let this year end without taking a minute and just talking about how happy I am with the things that they did this year. So that is really it, guys. Again, um, I know that I don't see every single knife from every single company, so let me know. What's your favorite company of the year? What are the things that you saw that really stood out to you, that really mattered this year? Um, what are the things that I missed maybe about Kershaw that you don't like? I don't know. Tell me your thoughts. So let's have a chat in, the con in, in a conversation in the comments and see where it goes, all right? Thanks very much for watching. Best wishes to everybody finishing up 2020. Hopefully a good start to 2021 will happen for all of us and uh, we'll get this one off on the right foot. All right. Take care. Have a good one.